Um, what was the biggest challenge or the biggest uh, uh, hiccup or banana skin that you that you had along the way? Our biggest challenge was turning distribution into rate of sale. We we were getting distribution and we had the I guess the the following wind that was coming with it with the organic movement which helped us. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is we were not selling particularly well. So it was convincing the trade that we were a commercial proposition rather than just an on trend brand. And we had to be pretty guerrilla in the way we did that. So we did, you know, invest significant sums in aggressive trial price promotions, in store tastings, not some of the I guess the sort of more brand building measures, but we, we had to fight quite hard to just retain that shelf space. Yeah, there were moments where we were spending money and not quite seeing the, the returns that we would like. And I think it was only perhaps when we continued to do the trade side, plus got the positioning and the packaging of the brand right that it started to really to really motor. Um, but that was uh, yeah, I think converting distribution to, to race of sale quickly is, is a real challenge. Yeah. Um, how has life changed? Have you been left to get on with it? Um, What's your feeling about an entrepreneurial spirit being dashed or left independent or encouraged within a larger corporation? Yeah, with, with the way we operate, we're still in the same office that we were before. We have a, a board of directors that still comprises Craig Sam and William Kendall. We work with two of our, our board before and myself. Um, so we run autonomously. The biggest difference, to be honest, um, is the financial reporting. In the before, the financial numbers that we produced were, were excellent, they're highly accurate. But um, we would do the month figures when we were ready and when they were accurate, whereas now we kind of have to do them almost the next day as our results are consolidated as part of a, a bigger group. So there is more reporting. In terms of interference on the brand and the marketing, there hasn't really been any. Um, and I would say to my team, it's, it's kind of in our own hands, really. If we keep doing a good job, then why as a shareholder would you, know, would you want to change that? So in America, we have the entire Cadbury sales force selling green and blacks um, as our way of entering the US market, whereas in the UK, we have a dedicated Green and Black team here, just so Green and Black. So, some of the expansion we're doing internationally, um, if we're honest, we probably didn't have the appetite or the, the know how or the financial resource to do that as an independent business because we were focusing very much on doing the, the core task here in the UK. We did do a bit of export to the US, but it was kind of a Friday afternoon task rather than the day job that it's now being done. We have a brother that's gained momentum, he's grown, he's still a small business now. Um, and in what is a challenging environment uh, currently, I just wondered, Andrew and uh, Mark, what you would advise a growing brand when you want to uh, look to maintain momentum, you have confidence in what you're doing. How much of a balance is that against what's going on out there? And you see other brands uh, withdrawing marketing spend that we want to kick on. How do you sort of balance that equation? It's a general approach. Yeah. It holds true whatever size of business you have, I think. But particularly when you're growing a, a new emerging brand, it's, we call it build centers of excellence. So concentrate in areas where you know that there is a receptive audience, both trade and consumer, and just build a, an outrageously high share of business in those particular customers. Then cascade that and take those case studies to retailers that perhaps need more, more convincing. And I think it's tempting, clearly tempting, when you're, when you're running a business to try and almost cut to the end game where you'd like all distribution to be. But the problem is with finite resources, and we, we all have that problem. Um, you start spreading what little resource, people and cash that you have far too thinly. And our experience, and you know, we, we work very closely with, with the likes of Waitrose where we have, you know, we have 30% 30, 30 share of the chocolate section in Waitrose versus an 8% total grocery share. So I guess we, we kind of over invest in places where we know we can do very, very well. And it's my, one of my lessons has been just don't underestimate how big those customers can become for you if you really do work in partnership with them. So focus, 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 and then kind of gradually take it to more places, I think would be, would be my advice on that. What about sort of expectations and profitability? Do you have to sacrifice it in the early stages? And what, what was your track record? Did it get to a point when you're always trying to measure against a performance margin or something? I think you have to separate out two things really. I mean, I think at the gross margin level, you kind of have to build robust margins, yes they will improve with volumes, but don't bank on them being transformed with volumes. But again, the structure and economics right from the start. So I think there are too many businesses that start with the gross margin that it's just never going to get to where it, where it ultimately needs to be. 